Hi class! This week's experiment is on one-dimensional motion. And one-dimensional motion is important because you're going to learn about acceleration. And acceleration is vital towards your understanding of forces. In addition to that, we'll go over a piece of software called graphical analysis that you'll be using throughout the semester. The essential equipment includes a cart and a pulley that pulls the cart with a constant force and should therefore give it a constant acceleration. Much of the experiment itself is quite simple. You'll bring the cart back, unlatch it, fire the spark generator, and then let it rip. But before doing that, let's talk a little bit more about the equipment and experimental setup. The spark generator periodically sends a high voltage to the spark gap, which then leaves little dots on the heat sensitive tape as it passes underneath. Before turning on the spark generator, make sure that this yellow cable is connected beneath the wooden block. This serves to complete the circuit, and if it's not connected, then you will complete the circuit. And that means when you press this button, you're going to receive a significant electric shock. The heat sensitive tape that we'll be using is actually pretty expensive, so only use what you need and no more. About six feet, or one arm span, should be a good amount. Handle the tape carefully because it's very sensitive to scratches. Thread the heat sensitive tape through the back end of the wooden block underneath the spark gap and then out the front end and finally secure it to the cart with a little piece of painter's tape. Keep the tail off the ground so that it doesn't get tangled as the cart begins to roll. The string needs to be threaded through the pulley so that the mass can fall smoothly. If it's not, just put the string back in the pulley's channel. Do the same for the top pulley as well. Check that the string is aligned with the pulley so that you know that the cart will go straight. Make sure that the spark generator is set to 20 Hz so that it fires a spark every .05 seconds. Once you're satisfied that everything is set up correctly, roll the cart back to the wooden block, unhook it, and then don't release it until you begin firing the spark generator. The spark generator leaves many small dots on the heat sensitive tape. These represent the cart's position at various times. Hold a meter stick upright next to the heat sensitive tape. The time interval between the first dot and the second dot likely isn't 0.05 seconds, so align the meter stick with the second dot, and then record the positions of all of the dots. One of the most important skills I'd like you to take from this class is how to present data professionally. For many of our graphs, we'll use this program called Graphical Analysis, which is available on the lab computers. Graphical Analysis is like Microsoft Excel, but it's easier to use and has some extended capabilities. To begin, our figure should have a title. Right-click anywhere on the graph and click Graph Options. Give your graph a descriptive title, such as Position versus Time of a Cart under Constant Acceleration. Then click Done. Next, right-click anywhere, scroll over Column Options, and select Data Set X. X doesn't mean position, it just refers to the horizontal axis, which in our case should be time. The short name will be t, and the units are seconds. Click Done. Do the same for the vertical axis. Right-click anywhere, scroll over Column Options, and select Data Set Y. Our vertical axis is position, its short name is x, and the units are centimeters. Click Done. You are now ready to enter your data. Click on the cell in the top left corner of the data table and begin entering the data that you took. I'll be working with fake data, so note that your time will be measured in intervals of 0.05 seconds. After completing the table, you will notice that all of your data is scrunched up against the left-hand side of your graph. This looks very unprofessional, so first click the A on the toolbar, which stands for Auto Scale Graph. This looks much better, though you'll notice that the leftmost data point and the rightmost data point are halfway off the side of your graph. To fix this, zoom out, then select your data, right-click, and select Zoom Graph In. Now all of your data is fully within the graph's boundaries. 
The figure looks much better, but the circles might be a little difficult to see. Right click, mouse over column options, and select data set position. Click the options tab. Under style, change empty circle to filled circle. Click done. Now our graph just needs a curve fit. Click Analyze in the menu bar and select Curve Fit. The type of curve fit we'd like to use is a quadratic fit, which takes the form AT squared plus BT plus C. Select it, click Try Fit, and click OK. Notice that this produces a box with the fitted parameters as well as error estimates. You may wish to change the position of this box so that the graph looks more compact. This is now a good figure, and you're ready to turn it in. Print it if you would like, and save it with a descriptive file name, such as 1D Motion X versus T. We should also produce graphs for velocity and acceleration. Click the leftmost button on the toolbar to create a new dataset. Repeat most of the steps above, graphing velocity versus time instead. One change we'd like to make is to recolor the markers to distinguish this graph from the position versus time graph. Right click anywhere, scroll over column options, and select data set velocity. Click the options tab, change the marker to a filled circle, and pick a new color, such as blue. Click analyze on the menu bar, and then click curve fit. This time, instead of a quadratic fit, we would like to do a linear fit, which takes the form m times t plus b. Click Try Fit, then click OK. As before, you may wish to move the text box to a more aesthetically pleasing part of your graph. Print the graph if you'd like, and then save it with a descriptive file name, such as 1D Motion V versus T. We need to repeat these steps one more time for our acceleration graph. Create a new data set, give it a title, axis labels, and data, then zoom to fit the data within the figure. Once you've done that, we should change the color of these markers to distinguish this graph from your position and velocity graphs. Right-click anywhere, scroll over column options, and select dataset acceleration. Click the options tab, change the marker to a filled circle, and pick a new color. I'll choose hunter green. Click done. It's not necessary to do a curve fit for your acceleration versus time graph because you will take the average of your data by hand. Print the graph if you'd like, then save it with a descriptive file name such as 1D Motion A versus T. Complete your write-up and attach copies of all three graphs and you are done.